Today I wanted to talk about a topic that you would think would be in mass abundance on YouTube, but ironically is not. And that topic is what is a cheap but fairly decent vlogging setup. Now there's a couple of videos on YouTube about it. Um, I personally don't think you really, uh, I guess depends on what you're doing, but if you're just making generic videos, I really don't think you need 4K. And I say that from a practical point of view, most people are watching it on their cell phones and uh, most of them don't have 4K screens, and also 4K is really four times the size for files you wanna save. And so if you're, you know, Tony Northrop and feel that you need to have 4K, great, but for the rest of us, generally no, 1080p I think is just fine. So I want to start doing some product reviews, and I really want to start uh, doing slightly better videos and I own a Nikon camera, I own a Nikon D600 with a couple of, with what, 14 lenses? So I have quite a few lenses, but as far as vlogging, I actually prefer the mirrorless Micro Four Third system, which I also have a GM1 and now a GF2 and this is the um, camera I'll be talking about today in this video and it is a um, Panasonic G6. And so let me go over the reason why I ended up uh, for vlogging, um, chose this setup. So we'll go ahead and uh, go through the components uh, one by one. We'll start up on top, and uh, that is a Rode mic, um, Rode video mic, and it was $99. Um, and one of the things I like about this Rode mic is, and let me show you the setup I uh, do, is on the G6, there's a mic input um, on top, which I think is well placed, so you can um, have the microphone set up there. But what I do is, if I'm doing a product review, I actually just go ahead and, uh, if I'm just taking a picture of a lens or something like that, I'm doing a product review, a tabletop review, and um, and I have the product pointed, I actually just go ahead and point the mic backwards so I'm talking into the mic and uh, not using the camera mic. So that's one of the benefits of the Rode mic and it is a $99. I will go ahead and probably put up a little stills picture of it. So um, the camera itself, the reason why I cho chose a G6 is um, two, a few reasons, but we'll cover them real quickly. Number one is the flippy screen, which I'm going to take the memory card out. That's what I'm recording with. Um, the flippy screen. I think this is quintessential basically because if you're going to vlog, you basically need to be able to see yourself in it. So I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And uh, we'll go, we'll talk, I'll talk about the tripod in a little bit. So um, I think it gives very, very good... Um, Decent image quality, and also the Micro Four Thirds lenses are uh, fairly sharp. Um, now, I want to, I'll go into lenses, I guess, in a little bit, but let me talk, cop, uh, cover the uh, details real quick of the uh, tripod. So this is a, um, this is a Pedro, Petco, I'm sorry, Ultrapod 2, Ultrapod 2, there you go, Ultrapod 2, and what I've, uh, Put on there is actually a newer uh, QR clamp. Oh, I think this is called a fishbone style. And this is uh, this was a uh, $7.97 on eBay that I bought purchased it for. And uh, the tripod itself was $18.50. And uh, so this is the tabletop setup I have. I like the tripod. It's fairly stable. Um, and it's got a strap, so if you need to strap to something, it works. And uh, the Niwar is basically an Arca Swiss uh, style, and uh, I have Arca Swiss uh, Kiara clamps on all my tripods. The uh, plate is some generic uh, eBay one, and it cost me a whole $5.95. But I got this one, and this is a low-profile one, and uh, I really like it because, again, it's low-profile. So... Um, the lens I have on this that I ended up picking was the uh, 14 to 45, not the 14 to 42 newer one, but the first generation 14 to 45. And it's got the, still got the uh, Mega uh, OIS uh, in, 
image stabilization system, but I find the focus to be, the zooming to be much smoother and there's a focus ring and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the lens I'm filming with right now is actually the 12 to 32 Panasonic and um, it's super compact and it's quite sharp, but the zoom is actually is uh, very stacked um, and staggered and so it, I didn't think it was a very good, um, I thought it was very good per uh, outdoors uh, lens, but for something that you're mostly going to be doing indoors, it's not ideal for vlogging, I personally don't feel. Um, the size of the lens, I know some people think it's big, but I mean, compared to my Nikon lenses, these are super tiny, and it's got a pedal shape uh, hood, and I really like that. And the body, like I said, uh, this is a used G6 in min minty condition, and I paid $257 for it. Um, this lens, the 14 to 50, I paid a uh, hundred, a um, hundred dollars on eBay for it. Uh, Rode mic, like I said, ninety nine dollars. Tripod was eighteen fifty. The QR clamp, the fishbone style QR clamp, was seven ninety seven, and the QR plate was um, five ninety five. Now I didn't include the price of SD cards because most of us have a bunch of them. So, all in all, this total setup for a, what I consider to be a quite versatile um, 1080p uh, vlogging setup is comes out to be $488.42, uh, not including tax and shipping. And I think, let's see if I can get the, uh, what you call it? And I think it's adequate for 95% of the population. Now, if you intend on making money from YouTube and that's going to be your primary source of income, I do think then at that point in time, you're going to probably have to step up to something like a G7 body. That being said, though, the other components, body aside, I would actually recommend the same thing. The 14 to 45 is actually sharper than the 14 to 42, and it's actually sharper than the one that I'm using right now, which is the 12 to 32. And so this was, when I did my research, this is my conclusion of the ideal, I don't want to break the bank, but I still want fairly decent quality vlogging setup. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the uh, two lenses that I had uh, in consideration as far as a vlogging lens. Um, the first one was this one, and I owned it. This is the 1232. Um, I bought it with my GM1, and as you can see, it's super compact. I got this scale out, so let's go ahead and take a peek. Um, it's 75.76 uh, grams, basically, without the rear lens cap. And uh, let's take a look at the 14 to 45 is considerably heavier at 191 ish and if we go ahead and throw on the uh, hood we're at 207 basically so quite a bit heavier but the difference is actually what i want to show the difference here let me turn off that is um is the smoothness of the zoom uh, you can't quite see but it's straight linear it just pushes out and the resistance is um the same uh, all the way through and there's a focus ring so if um, if you're doing focus peaking and uh, manually focusing then um, the focus ring is uh, available and also I um, on a tripod I will usually switch the uh, Mega OIS off and so I thought and it's a sharper like I said before it's a sharper lens in the 1420 or the 14 to 42 um, it's got three millimeters more on the uh, long end and it's sharper. So, and uh, used on eBay, I bought it for a hundred. So those are the benefits of that one. Now, this lens is fairly interesting. On uh, the GM1, it's quite great. Um, it's quite small as you can see, but um, when you extend it, it's a three section and uh, it feels a little bit cheap and it feels very, very brittle compared to uh, this one. And also, 
as you can hear, it kind of rattles and that's the, um, it does have image stabilization, but it, there's no switches and there's no focusing ring. And so focusing is this strange hodgepodge of having to focus on the camera body and um, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's just very, very strange. And uh, there's no way to actually turn off the um, image stabilization from the lens itself. You have to do it from in body. Um, this is uh, a 12 to 32 though. So there's a benefit because the wide angle is equivalent to a 24 and this one's a 14 to 45. So um, equivalent of uh, 28 to 90 in uh, 35 millimeter specs. And this one is equivalent to 24 to 60. 64. Um, of the two, um, I like both lenses. This one has good corner, to, uh, corner sharpness. This one has a sharper center. But um, for me, I'm a real estate uh, investor. And uh, what I find is this setup, I usually made it with this. And this is my um, GF2. Uh, I have the uh, tripod uh, mount on but this is usually my setup and i keep this basically in my glove compartment and uh this is my separate in the glove compartment oh i see the lens is kind of not well made um and so um oh, it's out of alignment but uh i think no problem with this lens so as you can see i'm turning it and it's not supposed to turn but i guess so so this is um the uh setup I usually have and have it sitting in my car and I actually have a um, pistol grip for it so um, when I take real estate uh, pick photos and videos this is the setup I use um, as a combo and I'll give you a pick right there of it um, and this sits in my glove compartment um, the pictures are pretty decent from it uh, there's a uh, optical sta image stabilization. So when I'm walking through the house on a pistol grip, by the way, this makes this 10 times more steady. Um, it's pretty good image quality. But overall though, um, when I was deciding on a vlog setup, um, this was the uh, lens I chose. Right now I'm filming actually on my uh, Olympus 25 millimeter F1.8. Um, that's a, it's a phenomenal lens. Um, but uh, for vlogging, having the uh, ability to basically crop in camera via Zoom um, is much easier because sometimes you're sitting across from the camera and you can Zoom to crop but versus uh, moving the tripod. So um, these are the decisions and choices I made under $500 for a very decent, I think a very decent uh, vlogging setup with uh, the 14 to 45 lens, the a Panasonic G6, a Rode video mic, and a, um, where's my tripod? And the uh, UltraPod 2, um, I think is a very, very good combo and something you can consider if you're on a uh, budget. 